Hey everyone! In this video, we're going to add a player character to our Phaser Editor v4 game and get them moving with some basic controls. We'll cover creating a player prefab, updating our sprite to use animations, enabling arcade physics with gravity and collisions, writing a simple script for movement, and finally some quick tips on debugging issues. Let's jump right in. Let's start by creating a new prefab for our player. To keep our project organized, we're going to create a new folder. So under our source folder, let's make a new folder. We're going to call this prefabs. And there's a few ways we can create prefabs in our game. If we already have an existing game object, we can right click on that game object. And from our menu, we can go to prefab and create prefab with object. What phaser editor will do is it'll open up our modal for where we want to create a prefab file. Let's choose our prefabs folder. I'm going to call this player prefab. We'll hit create. And then right away in our built-in blocks, we should see a new prefab section with our player game object. Under our prefabs folder, we should see our player prefab.js and our player prefab.scene. Another way we can create a prefab in our game, another way to create a prefab in our game is if we right click in our files folder, we can do new and we can do a new prefab file. And then we can just do test prefab. And then in the new file that gets created, we need to tell phaser editor what our base block will be for our prefab. Uh, for our example, we're going to do an arcade. We're going to do arcade sprite. So if we drag that block into our scene, now it's going to allow us to choose a texture for our base game object. And I'm going to choose my player character here. If we save, we'll see now we have our test prefab.scene and our test prefab.js file. All right, so we only need one player prefab. So I'm going to delete my test prefab from my project. And now I'm going to open up our player prefab.scene file. Now for our player prefab, we want to make sure we place our game object in the top left hand corner. So we want it to be positioned at 0, 0. And then I'm going to update my game object type. So currently my game object is set up to be a sprite. And I'm going to change this to be an arcade physics sprite. Now that we have our player prefab, let's enable physics so our player can fall with gravity and interact with our world. To enable physics for our game, we need to go into our phaser game configuration. So under our main.js file, where we have our game configuration, this is where we can add in our physics. As part of our configuration, we'll add in the physics property. This is going to be an object. We're going to add the default property, and we want to default to using our arcade physics. Now for our arcade physics, we need to add our arcade property. This will be an object. Now we want to set up our gravity. So for our gravity, this will be an object. For our x value, we're going to do 0. And then for our y gravity, let's set this to 500. All right, so if we save our changes, let's come back over to our browser. All right, so if we refresh, we'll see our player game object spawns and it starts falling right away. So we can see our gravity is working for our game. Now we need to update our player so they can collide with our platforms that we added previously for our level. So for our floor and our wall game objects, to enable physics, since we're using a basic shape, we need to manually tell Phaser that we want to add a physics body to this game object. And so to do this, we're going to use a script node. So under our source folder, let's do new. We're going to do a new folder. We'll call this script nodes. Now in our folder, let's right click, let's do new. Let's do a new prefab file. And for our file name, we'll do enable physics body script. Let's do create. Now in our new scene, from our built-in blocks, let's do script and we'll drag in our script node. So let's save. Now if we open up our enable physics body script.js file, inside here, this is where we'll add in our code to enable our physics body. All right, so now for our script, we're going to want to wait until our phaser scene is ready before we enable our physics body on our game objects. To do that, we're going to use our awake method. So in phaser editor, when you create a scene, by default, they're going to emit a custom event called awake, and we can listen for this event to know that our game objects are set up with the appropriate properties, and now we can add additional logic uh, through our code. So now when our awake method is called, we're going to expect this script to be attached to a game object. So we're just going to add a safeguard and say if this dot game object if this is not set, then we just want to return early. Otherwise, we want to reference our game object scene. And then we want to reference our physics property. We're going to do add, and then we're going to do existing. And now we need to provide our game object that we want to add our physics body to. And so we're going to do this, our game object. And then for our second argument, we can pass if we want that physics body to be static or not. For the time being, we'll set this to be true. And what that means is our game object by default won't be affected by gravity and it won't move, but we'll still be able to use it for collisions. So now that we have our new script, if we go back over to our level scene, we should be able to add it to our game objects. So if we select our floor one game object, and then we can use our shortcut U to add a script node. You can also right click on your game object, go to scripting and do add script. Now we want to choose our enable physics body script. All right, if we save, let's come back over to our browser. If we refresh, 
it looks like nothing's actually changed in our scene. And so one thing that can help us debug our issue is if we come back over to our game configuration, when we set up our physics, we can pass an additional property called debug, and this will allow us to draw an outline of our physics body for our game objects. By default, this is set to false, and so we're going to set this to be true. Come back over to our browser if we refresh, now we'll see on our player game object, we have this purple box around our player, and now we have this blue box around our floor game object. What those rectangles represent is this is our physics body for our game object, and it's showing that our blue game object is static, and then our purple game object can be affected by gravity. So we can see our physics bodies are working, but now to have our player collide with our floor, we need to add in what's called a collider. So to do that, we'll want to come back over to our level scene, from our built-in blocks under Arcade, let's drag in our Collider block. So now in our Collider, now we want to choose which game objects we want to check for a collision with. So for our collision, first let's choose our Player Prefab. For our second game object, let's do our Floor. So now if we save, if we come back over to our Browser, now if we refresh, we'll see right away when our player drops, they'll land on the floor, and now they're actually colliding with our Floor game object. Now that we have our physics working between our player and our floor, we can work on adding in our player input so we can move our player around. To do this, we'll need to listen for input from our keyboard keys and then update our player game object based on that input. Let's jump over to our player prefab. In our scene file, we'll want to use our built-in blocks for our keyboard key, so then we can listen for input on that specific key. So under our built-in blocks, under input, let's drag in an instance of our keyboard key. Let's update our variable name, we'll call this left key. Now we need to choose our key code we want to listen for. Let's look for left. And now we want to do the same thing for our right key, so we'll drag in one more instance. Let's update our variable name. We'll do right key. For our key code, let's search for right. Let's save. Now if we open up our player prefab.js file, we'll see inside our code and our constructor, we should have our two properties, our left and our right key, added to our class. So now we can add in custom code to listen for our input and then move our player game object accordingly. So now to check to see if one of our keys is being pressed, we'll want to use our update method. Our update method is going to be called once every tick of our game loop or about 60 times per second. And inside this method, this is where we'll check to see if one of our keys is being pressed. And if so, we'll update our game object's body's velocity. So the first thing we'll do in our update method is we're going to make sure our game object's active. And so we're going to do this. If it's not active, we want to return early. If our game object is active, now we want to see if one of our keys is being pressed. And so we'll do if this, we'll reference our left key, and we'll do is down. That means the player is pressing that key right now. And so if our key's down, we want to update our game object's velocity to move it with our physics body. So we'll do this. Let's do set velocity x. And now we need to provide our x velocity. And for this, we're going to do negative 80. So we're doing negative since we want to move our player in the leftwards direction in our scene for our x value. Now we'll want to do the same thing for our y value. So let's copy this block of code. And we'll do else. And then if our right key is down, then we want to set our x velocity to be 80. Finally, if neither of our keys is being pressed, we want to reset our velocity so our game object stops moving. So let's do else. We'll copy this block of code. And now we just want to set this to be zero. All right, so now for our player prefab, now we just need a way to invoke our update method. We could do this by updating our level scene and our code here to automatically call our update method, or we can update our player prefab game object to listen for our update event from our level scene and then run our code automatically. So to listen for that event, let's come up to our constructor. We'll go to where we can add in our custom code. Let's do this. We're going to reference our phaser scene that our game object belongs to. We'll reference our event emitter. And now we're going to use the on method to listen for an event. So now we're going to want to listen for our phaser, our scenes, our events, and then our update event. And now we're going to call our update method. And we want to pass in this for our scope. So now that we're listening for this event, we'll want to make sure we clean it up when our game object is destroyed. So to do that, we'll do this. We're going to do the once method to reference our event emitter on our game object. And now we're going to listen for when we have that destroy event. So we'll do phaser. We'll do our game objects, our events. Now we're going to do the destroy event. So now when this event is fired, we'll run this code here in our callback. And now we just want to do the same line of code, but we're going to use the off method. And that's going to turn off our event listener. So we stop listening for that event. So now if we save and come back over to our browser, 
If we press our right key, we'll see our game object starts moving around our scene. And if we press our left key, we'll start moving the other direction. Nice. So now that we have our basic logic working for our player input, we're going to work on polishing this. So first, when our player moves in the leftwards direction, we want to have our player face that direction. For the sprite sheet I'm currently using, my sprite only faces in the one direction, and so I need to update my game object to have it flipped in the other direction. And so to do that, we can use our flip properties on our game objects. Our flip property allows us to flip a game object either on the horizontal or vertical axis, and it'll face in the other direction. And so on our game objects, by default, both our flip X and flip Y properties are set to false. So if we want to use it, when we press our left key, we're going to do this. We'll reference set flip X. We're going to set this to be true. I'm going to copy that. And when we press our right key, we want to set it back to be false. So now we come back to our browser. If we press our right key, we face our right direction. If we press our left key, now our game object faces in the other direction. Nice. Finally, for our player, if we have animations, we'd actually want to play these while our player is moving. And so currently our project's set up, we have our player with this running animation here, and so we're going to want to play this animation once our player starts moving. To do that, since our player is a sprite, we can use our built-in animation properties to play this animation on our game object. So when our left key is being pressed or our right key is being pressed, we'll want to play that animation. To do that, we'll do this, we'll do play. And now we want to reference our animation key. So now in our animations JSON file, I'm going to click on our animation. I'm going to copy our key name. I'll come back to our player prefab. We'll do player run. Now for our second argument, we're going to pass in true. So ignore if playing does is if our animation is already playing with this key name, we won't restart our animation. If we omit this or pass in false, then our animation will constantly restart while we're pressing our key. And we don't want that. We just want our animation to keep playing if it's already playing. So let's copy that line of code. We'll paste it if we're pressing our right key. Then finally, if not pressing either of our keys, we'll want to go back to our idle animation. So I'm going to copy our key here for our player idle. Now let's save. Come back over to our browser. Now if we press our right key, we have this nice animation when our player is moving around. Nice. All right, so the last thing we'll do for our level is for our wall, we're going to add in our physics body so our player can't leave our scene. So we come back over to our level scene. If we go into our level layer, let's choose our wall. Let's add in our script node. I'm going to use a shortcut U. I'm going to choose our physics body script. And we'll do it for our floor too as well. So we'll do our script nodes, enable physics body script. So now that we've added our physics body, we just need to add in our collider to check for our collisions between our player and that game object. So instead of adding a collider for each of our game objects that we need to check for collisions with, we're going to update our existing collider to work with an array of game objects. And so to do that, under our built-in blocks, let's drag in our list block into our scene. What this will do is it's going to create a new game object type called a list, and basically this is an array that we can add game objects to. I'm going to update our variable name. I'm going to call this collision objects. And so now to add game objects to our array, we need to choose that game object. In our inspector under a list, we can now choose our new list game object that was added. So we're going to add it to our collisions objects. Now we'll want to do the same thing for our floors. And now if we choose our collider, we're going to update our object two to no longer be floor one. Instead, we'll want to use our collision objects list here. So let's choose that object. Let's save. If we come back over to our browser. When our player falls, they should still collide with our floor. And now if we try moving through our wall, we're not able to. Nice. That's it for adding a player and basic movement to your game. In this video, we covered how we can update our phaser game to use the built-in arcade physics, and how we can enable gravity by default. We created a player prefab, and we updated our prefab to be an arcade physics sprite. We then updated our player prefab to listen for player input, and then to move our game object around our scene using our physics. We saw how we can enhance our player movement by adding things in like animations and flipping our game object to face the direction we're moving. And then we saw how we can enable physics on game objects that don't have a physics body by default. Finally, we saw how we could use colliders to check for collisions between one game object and another, or one game object and an array of other game objects. In our next videos, we'll work on adding in jumping and having our camera update to follow our player. So make sure to subscribe and follow along. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.